off to Fabian, who will give his demo on uh, some cool things, actually. Cool things. All right. Um, for, are you able to see my desktop, first of all? Yes. All right, fantastic. All right, so I guess we can set up the demo by, um, it's a great segue into what um, Chris was talking about before um, with regards to leveraging um, uh, chat copilot um, as a means to interact, um, you know, with underlying data and I'm um, asking questions, which is what my demo is going to do. But the, the the real meat and potatoes in terms of how this um, starts, and I guess I should introduce myself first, and the you get the context behind it. My name is Fabian Williams, and I'm a senior product manager on the Microsoft Graph team um, at Microsoft. So. Microsoft Graph is um, usually at a, the intersection or crossroads of um, a lot of things in, in Microsoft 365. And as such, um, for developer experiences, we expose various endpoints that developers can use to build um, solutions and applications. And as a life cycle around uh, Microsoft Graph, you know, we have changes, you know, new additions, we have deprecations, um, you know, we have you know, tons of stuff that's going on. And we have a website that's dedicated to that at developer.microsoft.com where we have a change log. So um, the question now becomes, um, as these changes happen over time, you know, it's going to you know, get bigger and bigger and bigger and things going to get buried. And either from a perspective of an end user who wants to know what's going on or they're blocked and, um, and they need to figure out, you know, has it been a change? Or um, internally here at Microsoft, um, an API producer or a product manager um, or a PM, um, you know, needs to find out, you know, okay, what's going on over time on an API that they manage? I wanted to provide an experience that allows them to ask in natural language what is going on. So this change law becomes a, a tool of sorts, and it, and what I'm going to use it as basically the corpus of data, um, you know, for the um, for, for the demo and for the for the plugin. So um, it, it exposes the RSS feed, which is great because then I can just uh, you know use something like Beautiful Soup or um, or other other tools in Python to pull this information in. And then you can do a bulk, um, you know, ingress, and then you can do, you know, schedule jobs later on, you know, to get, you know, items as they change. So upon doing that, um, where am I need to go next? Yeah, here, I basically um, have that come over into um, a Pinecone database and I use uh, this script. Uh, is it that one? Yeah, this script basically to go and grab the, the change log and RSS feed, um, you know, pull the information down. It is noteworthy um, that, that you want to, because each change, you have no idea what the length is going to be. And um, yeah, I think to Chris's point before, in terms of tokens, you are going to be using tokens in terms of like the embedding token to, um, to um, you know, to embed and get vectors of the items that it, within the change log. And as you pull stuff in, you, you want to be mindful of that. So you certainly want to chunk them into the right size. Um, you don't want to either have um, rate limit issues um, or you don't want to have um, you know, other issues that may come as a result. And um, using the, um, from GitHub, they provide you samples in terms of uh, you know, how to work with Pinecone. In, in my instance, um, not, not Azure um, Cognitive Search, which I could have done as well. Um, in terms of how to get that structure, one of the structures that's required is you know having the ID, the text, which is basically going to be vectorized, um, and also any um, additional metadata that's there. And that's what you've seen right there. And then basically you just dump it to Pinecone. Um, I'm using um, a, a, a hosted app, and um, this one does take authentication, which is something that you need to be concerned with when you're building plugins. Is it going to be no auth or is it going to be auth? So this auth is going to be basically a bearer token. And um, we basically just loop through all of the items and we dump it to Pinecone. One of the things that I did just as test um, right up front was, um, and, and in the end, I also wanted to provide multiple path of use. So, you know, one path I'm going to demo here is certainly going to be with the um, with the uh, chat copilot, but obviously you could put this anywhere that you want. Um, so, um, you know, querying it right off the bat, I wanted to create um, you know, retrieval augmented generation rag pattern. So, you know, setting up my my uh, libraries, my making sure my connections are good. Um, and uh, like, in fact, I tell you what, you're going to see something that I haven't talked about yet. So we talked about Pinecone. So let's actually go over to this guy here. And this guy here is basically the hosted application on DigitalOcean that's doing um, a lot of the work. And um, this basically is exposed. Um, let me go to that real quickly here. Um, 
uh, is exposed. If I go to here for a query, is it, no main pie, right? Exactly. As um, that's the wrong place actually. What I want to be is here. Um, there's a query endpoint that you're basically gonna that the, the copilot is gonna go against, and um, one of the things it's gonna look for is um, this query this query pattern um, basically. Um, you know, and, and, and as an example in my descriptor, were there any recent changes, um, you know, to the user endpoint in V1? And that's inside my um, my OpenAI um, definition, um, which is what the chat copilot is going to use in order to take the written word as, uh, as the prompt and then figure out how to structure it so that it can call the um, this plugin and, you know, and this manifest when something around graph is invoked. Um, so once that's done, um, I, I also, as I mentioned before, I have um, this guy here. I ha basically this is me setting up that query, which is why that's important for me to do this reference before. And uh, I wanted to create something that would could be used outside of chat. So I have a rag pattern here. So I created my own prompt. Um, I'm basically saying that later on um, there's going to be something in a variable called retrieve content which is basically going to be coming from pinecone and i'm telling the prompt to manage the history look at the user input grab information from there setting of course a temperature to as restrictive as possible and uh, managing tokens there and then doing a search back i'm not going to show this part i can if there's time left but i think you know the other one is just going to be more useful but once all of that is done what i want to do is come over here now Sorry, go back to start for jumping around. There we go, right here. And I'm going to check inside here to see if it's still available. So it, it's still here and it's still enabled. So basically, if it wasn't there, you would basically add your plugin. You would add basically the site. Um, I'm going to do another one later on so you actually will see it. Um, and it's just an in interest of time I'm not doing it with this demo. And then you basically do um, enable, and then you'd have to put in the um, the personal access token, which is the bearer token. But once you've done that, Ideally, and I'm just going to um, grab it. Let me just do another one. New chat session. That's a little bit cleaner. And that was quick. So let's just test it. Hi, I am Fabian. So it's going to do. So some, it's been sitting here for a while. Sometimes it does time out. All right. All right. Good. Looks good. All right. So again, just double check. It's there. I'm going to go and grab something from a previous one that we've done just for giggles sake. Um, and there it is. And it's useful to take a look at this as well, too. You'll notice that if I come down here, it talks about SSL certificate. This was done on September the 30th. And there's a few others here where SSL certificate was done. So you, you know that if you're using just chat GPT by itself, there's going to be a cutoff period. So we shouldn't expect to see anything from the, 20, the 23rd. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to ask the question, control V, enter. And what we should expect to happen is um, we should get back a, a, a prompt um, or at least a dialogue in a modal asking us, you know, it found this um, this plugin. Do you want to do it? And again, this, with the entire concept of Copilot, you want to make sure that you are in the driver's seat so you can say no, cancel it. And this is especially useful if this is going to do something damaging like drop table, delete table, stuff like that. You want to be able to back that out. So I'm, I'm able here to click yes, proceed. Um, and then it should basically go out and structure something for me. And you can see it's basically telling me here um, some of those items that were done. And when it's finished, I'm actually going to ask it something in context. So this goes to the chat dialogue that um, Chris also mentioned before. So I'm going to say, well, it, right now it's just waiting in order to create this item here, which I'll speak to a little bit later. But what I can do it in the meantime. Say, warm was this on the beta or v1 endpoint and i'm saying it in this context right so it should basically figure out i'm still talking about the ssl certificate so hopefully when it comes back we should get um, the same dialogue and it will infer using the history that i'm talking about ssl so acquiring external information from the planner again so now you can see it says where were the recent changes to SSL certificate V1 or beta. So you can see basically con, um, it combined both items there for us. And I'm going to say yes, proceed. And it's important to know here as well, I could be using sequential planner, but in here I'm using action planner. So it's only executing one, the best plan at a time. It's not actually doing you know a chained event. 
And you can see here it says it was on the beta endpoint as well too. So it's you know you, you can have a conversation with it. So rather than going and searching and digging and figuring stuff out, you know, within context of where you are, you can do that. So I promised you something else. Um, am I still good on time, Alex? All right, awesome. See, you're not in your head. So let's actually do something else that I did. Um, I actually have another one here, which is actually an API call. This guy here um, is a weather API. Uh, so it it, it um, takes your location and does an API call against the weather API and returns information. I'm using that inside Chat Copilot. Obviously, again, the same thing principles apply. Chat GPT on its own can't give you current weather because it doesn't know that information based on what it was trained on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab this because I'm going to need this here. Control C. So this is me grabbing the app in terms of where it's stored. And I'm going to come back over to here and I'm going to say plugins and I'm going to add a plugin. So this is what you didn't see me do before. Control V It's going to look at the manifest file and the open API descriptor. It checks all of those buttons. Everything's fine. I do add plugin. It's added, but it's not enabled. And now in this case, I'm going to do enable. Now, in the previous example, it would have asked me for the bearer token here because this is no auth. It is not. Now, with this done, um, I can see it's enabled here. And I'm going to come here and say, now, what, um, what is the current temperature in Columbia, Maryland, which is where I live? And just for giggle's sake, it should say 68 degrees looking at, it, at my watch right here. So let's go ahead and say enter. Should tell me that it's going to go use that other plugin, um, which is the weather plugin, and then it should come back with information. This one I didn't test before doing the call, so we'll see what happens. Oh, there it is. So it's using the weather plugin, check weather, and it's in Columbia, Maryland right there. I click um, OK. And it should say, uh, it says 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, the range is from 44 to 68. And yeah, I guess where I live, it's 68. But at some place in time, it is doing that. And um, and it's actually referenced in October the 10th right here, giving us some humidity, wind information, and so on and so forth. So that's another example of just using Chat Copilot. You've seen an example of using um, a rag pattern. Um, Pulling information um, from into Pinecone from from our change log, and you've seen another example here of um, of uh, basically doing um, an API call, and that's what I have for my demo.